Alright, today we're working on the rack. I've got my heater going in the background. That's what you hear. Uh, it should have been running for too long before it runs me out of here. It's supposed to be in the 60s today, but right now it's a little cool in here. Um, just to get it about where it was, now this was the rack that came on the Mustang. Uh, so, pretty much everything should be pretty close um, as far as alignment goes. Now, the whole front end's been rebuilt, so it's got to be realigned for all that, but this will get me in the ballpark. Uh, I didn't break this nut loose, I just broke the tie rod itself loose. Go with some notes. This on there. Hoping to get the rack on today. The lines built for it. Uh, the, I did the console yesterday. I'm going to redo it. He uh, wants cup holders. So he's ordering a different console that will not work with how I set the shifter in there for the shifter cable. So I'm going to build something totally different. Uh, so that I'll just have to figure it out. shot a video yesterday on it at this time it hasn't been uploaded but I'm hoping it will be soon here's that side done he went down and bought some fluid uh, fortunately See if you want to take it back. He bought it at AutoZone uh, or Riley's. I think it's AutoZone. I don't buy my fluids from them. Um, I get a discount. I still don't buy my fluids from them. Uh, usually, Walmart's the best place. Sometimes they will price match uh, Walmart. Some associates will, some won't. Uh, I went to one one day and <laughs> literally was across the street is a Walmart from O'Reilly's and Advance Auto. And I said, hey, I... that's weird. Well, the nut broke loose and the whole thing's twisted, threads and all. Um, so, uh, anyhow, so I go to him, I say, hey, can you price match Walmart? And he's like, oh, no, they're not our competitor. <laughs> How are they not your competitor? They're literally... They're literally right across the street. And he said, yeah, they're not. We don't consider them our competitor. Well, ow. I mean, they're selling oil. Hell, they used to sell back when we were young. Uh, you go to Walmart, and the automotive aisle was pretty nice. You can get spark plug wires for any vehicle, spark plugs for any vehicle. Um, they had a good selection, but uh, that's before they decide to go into the food market and cut down what they carry. But anyhow, they were wanting $44, I think it was, 40 bucks, $40 for a thing of mobile one full synthetic. And uh, 
Walmart was selling it for twenty one. I explained to him, I said, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, you need to match them or I'm walking across the street. I didn't care. They were like, I'm going to walk across the street. and said, okay, bye. Uh, so, yeah, I would think a parts store would be able to sell oil cheaper uh, since that's what they specialize in. Uh, contact the oil companies and get a deal. But, you know, that... They just don't. So, hell, do this with the number. Uh, sell it in bulk. You know, get some barrels and get like a quick loop center. And, you know, I'll bring my own damn container. Hell, you sell those fancy oil dump containers. They'll hold oil just as good as they'll empty them. Uh, sell it like that. Bring your own container. Hell, I'm surprised some quick loop centers don't do that. That'd be a good idea for a quick loop center if anybody out there was interested in that, that, oh, I don't know, uh, runs a quick loop center or has connections with a quick loop center. That would be a... Uh, a good market I mean we can change your oil or bring in their own container and we'll sell you five quarts I mean the digital guns is gonna show exactly five quarts you know, advertise a, a set price and that way if it's a six quart system or a five and a half quart system, they can buy the exact amount. All right. Anyhow, he bought the fluids just to fill up the Mustang and spent a little over $300. And that's power steering fluid, coolant, rear diff, antifreeze, and oil change. Alright, so her uh, 
uh, getting ready to make the rack of pinion lines. Uh, we'll have one line go for the return from here. I've got it mocked up to right there. Just getting out a little bit. And then the second line will go from here up to here. It goes straight up. Uh, straight up in between here, around there. It's got to go back to this spot right here. This is your high pressure out from the hydro boost. Uh, this is your reservoir right here. Um, other than that, we've got the electrical block done. Uh, with a fuse. Uh, it's a 250 amp fuse. That'll run from the battery to power everything up front. The electrical done, the computer's mounted. The AC kit, uh, part of it's gonna go out here, so I can't put it on the fender until I do that. Uh, on the inside, I'm gonna make a custom door panel for it, but, the fuse panel will go right there. Uh, I installed the shifter, um, but I don't like it. He wants to get cup holders in here. He ordered a different console piece for here. It comes with two cup holders. The bracket for the cable goes straight through there. So I'm going to build a box and drop this down into the floor under the vehicle some, uh, about two inches, three inches. So I'll be fabricating that. Got my power lines over there. Um, technically, if I hooked up this wire right here uh, to the fuel pump, uh, I could jump everything else and go ahead and fire it up, but we're not going to. I'm not in that big of a hurry. I um, want to get everything else done. I'm also going to try to do the fluids and get all the fluids set. So, so when you're doing these lines, uh the kind i like to get is the screwing kind uh you press it in there which is just pushing up against something and then thread this in make sure whichever ones you get these fittings match the line that you got and i don't mean by size by brand uh i've seen them blow off um you know the specs might be off just a hair bit different and this this can blow out I've never seen it happen when you use the right one for the right brand. So, then these just screw down in there. And I'm gonna go over here. To our vise. in tighten it down Move that into the six. You just gotta put a little bit of pressure down on it to get it started. Once it starts, it will thread down in there. Uh, these big of a crescent, you gotta grab both the top and the bottom so it'll go all the way down flush. Now you can mark the cable so you can see if it pushes out. It easily pushes out a little bit in the very beginning. Until it's seated. I like doing it perfectly seated. There you go. It's not butchered up. It's nothing else. And ready to go in. 
these magnets on this thing are not that good. So, you can go back over here, put you up here, hopefully where you can see everything. I'm gonna drop this line down through, see how I want it to route. Actually gonna go up around here. Um, and around here. I wanna go on the outside of these cables. I want it to be as far away as I can from the headers without having to zip tie the shit out of it. Uh, so, there's that one. All right, it's connected. I like that. That's a little bit closer to the header than what I like on this one. Of course, it's movable. So, slide it back some. These cables are kind of closer than what I want, but I'll probably wrap them with some heat wrap. I mean, it's, it's away from it, but over time, it could heat it up and deteriorate it. Um, I'm going to go to... I think right there would be good. So, to figure out where you want it, take a piece of tape. I prefer to use electrical tape. Let's see here. Yeah, I think right there is good. Put a piece of electrical tape on it. That doesn't just mark it, but when you cut it, Keep it from coming apart on you and make it slide into the new fitting easier. And for this fitting up here, I'll use a 90 on it. So, back over here. Normally, I would be using uh, an air cutter to cut through this, or a duck wheel, but I can't. like three o'clock in the morning I couldn't sleep so I came out here to do some work and my wife's in there asleep she's got to work in the morning so should get up and kick my ass if I'm out here using a death wheel it will be a death wheel <laughs> See, it's pushed all the way to the flush of the threads. I don't know if you can see that or not. I can't see the camera right now.
like climbing uh, flanges up. See what I mean? And it's just my preference. Um, damn it, son. He's fighting me. I like having these lined up. It just looks more professional in my opinion. All right, let's see how she fits. size second one that's a eight that's gonna piss me off that big goes see I know it's a six come by looking at it, but it's acting like it's a size off Surprise me. Okay. I'm going to use a regular wrench on that. And a stubby on top of that. To even get down to it. Should be 11 sixteenths. There's a 6 a.m. That's tight enough. I left a gap. In between the washer, the, uh, the wiper motor and the line, I left a slight gap. Uh, this is the return line. It will go on here. And I can go ahead and tighten that one down real quick. And 
just gonna slide down in there with this. My customer wants me to uh, pull off these here and he's going to take them and get them powder coated so as soon as I get all this stuff done get it back down on the ground I'll do that <clears throat> feels tight Grab my smallest ratchet because those are easy to strip out. So I was trying to be careful to not strip it out. Okay, so that's done. Let's uh, go back down here. So this one's gonna go right here. Now I've gotta make a line to go from here to here. And let's see here, here's the line. Uh, I have a 190 fitting there. It's gonna go here. And I need a straight fitting for over there. Okay. Okay. So now let's test fit it. Here it is. Let's go back here. That one's going to be fun to tighten down. <laughs> well, that one's going to be fun to get on there. I can't get my fat fingers in there. It'd be a lot easier to do without a cave member. There we go. She's tightening down now. Turn this one where it's up. <laughs> Perfection on my wrench. There's, there ain't no way I'm getting anything else up in there. My crescent ain't gonna fit. <clears throat> the guy that built the car the first time. So they couldn't fix a leak right here. Uh, well, that's because they didn't have the right fittings. They just used regular screw-in adapters in there instead of actual rack and pinion adapters. And they don't seat right. <clears throat> that one's tight. That's tight. Now our high pressure line. Get on there. This tight. I've got a couple electrical things to do. <clears throat> That's tight. Uh, this has got to get away from there. And I couldn't strap this back until I had these lines in place. Now that lines are in place, we can wrap. A zip tie. 
around here and between here back down this will keep one of our temperature sending unit wires away from uh, getting tangled up with the steering. I wish I would have done it a little bit further down. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm going to. I don't like that. Mm. And if I don't like it, I'm not leaving it like that. Mm. Um, we're gonna go. How do I want to go with this? Oh, I don't want it around the K member. I think that looks like shit. I'm gonna try to go up to around here. Go through this here. show you what I mean. I don't know if you can see it from your view. Mm. Flush. Side cutters up in there. Prevent someone from cutting their hands later. Um, it's just why right here. Um... zoomed in this wire right here is now tight and towards the bottom before it was all the way up here and if it got caught up in one of these bolts with the steering it would have ripped it right out um, so and I thought I was working on the temperature sending ones but actually that's the oil one but still has to be back out of the way 